Okay, so here we're on the third turn of uh, our training exercise scenario. And we're going to get these additional squadrons. CGX and DDG. A couple of uh, fake counters. I'll put them into play. Go like this. All right. I'm actually planning on using these guys to attack and try to look like this is the screening maneuver. You know, whatever. The new cards that came in. Some interesting stuff. So I've got these precision targeting which allowed to uh, fire off two orders. And if those units attack, they get a better to hit roll. That's a nice card. Definitely worth trading in the three points, but maybe not the battle dice. This one, operational logistics. Ooh, this is a nice one. Oh, I'm sorry, only one die for these. I've got three dice here. I'm probably going to save this for combat. Uh, search doesn't seem too valuable in this scenario. Yes, there are some hidden units. <coughs> there shouldn't be any except these guys, uh, except that I'm playing the advanced rules. But um, I just uh, I see search as being less valuable since the goal is to kill things, unless things are hidden. Unless everything's hidden, if you can find anything, you ought to target that, probably. That's my guess. There might be scenarios, I know there's these nukes buttons, or counters, which uh, come up with some interesting words for things. Is the brain connecting wrong? Uh, those nuked button, uh, yeah, there we go again, uh, counters. Um, so maybe there are scenarios where there's, you know, uh, a boomer out there trying to slip through and some fleet aspects uh, providing some support where you're really hunting one particular unit. Over here, uh, this one's really impressive because it adds to the hand size uh, and then allows you a discard and a free order. So the discard will allow you to re reinvigorate your hand. So if you've got some kind of lousy cards, <coughs> although most of the cards seem to have some value. So well, I, it may depend on who it's for. So like this one, this is a crappy card for blue, low points, only one t uh, pip, only one die. Three dice for red though, and you know, an interesting thing, if any K-29s are in a city hex, you get bonus political will. That's really important. Political will is how you win this game, remember? <coughs> okay, so uh, we're on the movement phase. Red gets to go first. Do I have anything to hide? Doesn't look like it. But as I uh, allowed myself, I'm going to drop this up here. I'm out of dummy counters. I can obviously remove one and like I said if this was revealed I could put a dummy there. However the difference here is and, and I could just reveal it. Uh, the difference here is this is an unknown thing so I want to keep it maybe it's a dummy that I'm putting another dummy on just to help confuse the US player. I'm twisting the rules a little bit. Okay what do we want to do? Well, we want to concentrate on getting some firepower into place. So far, we haven't caught that will up uh, to where we want it. The U.S. is still going to win if I don't do something. Now, that's something I want to do. I probably don't want my carrier exposed out here. Let's launch my planes. If I don't do that, I'll forget. Actually, I could launch them after I move but I feel like I'm in the right area right now. So let's get these out of the way. Sail them up here. You know, this is one of those games where I don't know if it makes any sense to try to show... Naval games have this issue in general, to try to show the storyline very well. It works fine in an operational, strategic type game. Uh, you know, like uh, when I did... Uh, oh, what was it? Empire of the Sun. Uh, or, or when I did uh, 
Axis Empires. It works okay to step away, but here it's almost like every action, that's all there really is. It, it, it's the activities that are interesting. <clears throat> it's also such an integrated game in the sense that, you know, you're, you, you play an order and you roll the combat dice and then, you know, you do another order immediately off the same card in another order. And it's like there's no point in the game where you can sit back and kind of uh, just enjoy the storyline of what's going on in my view and that's kind of a minus for me but in terms of maintaining the uh, excitement and engagement in a game it's probably very good for a lot of people <coughs> okay let's see what we want to do I'm trying to figure out what's sort of the best way of handling things um, one of the dangers is these standoff weapons can hit so a U.S. destroyer, one, two, three, four, it can hit all the way out to there. Uh, there's not much I can do about that. I got my carrier too close. Using my zones of control here, as you would in a in a land game. Now, actually, I don't have to move things in stacks at this point, so I can slip this back here. And let's get our air units. Uh, what am I worried about? I'm worried about my carrier, to tell you the truth. Let's make sure that's not going to get hit too hard. <clears throat> now the U.S. gets to move. Yeah, so I'm using my zones of control to prevent some sort of penetration. Fleets work best at this because they can interdict both air and naval units. Um, so now for the U.S., well, I have no planes. That makes the carrier kind of pointless. I'm going to set that adrift out this way. And mm -hmm. now this looks like a dummy, you know, I mean, these guys probably covering the carrier, these guys sliding up. The truth is, I'm trying to play a little cutesy game there. Oh, uh, yep, I can hide my sub. Now, do we know that there's only one SSN? Yeah, the U.S. only has one SSN, so the Russians know this isn't a real sub. Uh, what's the range of attack on one of these? Three hexes, that's pretty good. I'd like to get some strikes in on... That's the end of my movement. Which throws us over to the operations. And blue has the option to go first here. Well, hitting the carrier actually doesn't make a lot of sense. What do I have card-wise that I want to play? This is kind of cool. I didn't explain any of the cards. I, I, I was all excited about those cards. I didn't explain these. Uh, Railgun attack. A, a CGX units. It's only a single order. So if I had a pair of CGXs, now I think, crap. I have one CGX alone uh, with a destroyer in, in place with it. Um, it gets a really nice span of firing. 
and that replenishes my card which is kind of nice too giving me defensive stuff but critical hit is even more that's a one unit attack as well which works well with a submarine so let's do this let's play the critical hit card which has lousy uh, dice advantages for the US and what's flank speed up to two units ships and submarines units ordered this turn can move two additional uh, hexes that could be useful for performing a strike with this the problem is I got all those planes covering uh, the, the uh, Chinese carrier. Okay, so it can target a specific revealed enemy unit within range. The target doesn't get any counterattacks or saves. That's kind of cool. I'm going to shoot the carrier. I am within range of it, and that means I get three dice. Now the carrier takes three hits. Ship. The U.S. carrier takes four. I only got one hit out of that, right? No, four, five, and six hit. I sunk it. That's awesome. Okay, and that's going to cause some serious problems for the Chinese. This takes up the entire row. I'm going to mark it that way. <coughs> um, it causes some serious problem. These planes are going to have to take an operation move and then land back here. Uh, I've just knocked out Chinese air power for the, perhaps the game if I don't have some kind of card that lets me bring a carrier back from the dead, right? Or some other uh, effect. So that was a pretty potent attack and that was using my event play. Remember, I have to do the event first. Now, there's the problem. I can't use another event. Did I cheat last turn? Maybe. I'm not sure. I, see, the rules are not terribly clear about this in my view. Because then when we go to... See, we play this as an event or an order, the one card, and then we go, I think the only thing I'm allowed to do now is orders, which means I won't be able to do the railgun attack. For my cards, I have two cards that have nice die roll numbers. Now maybe this would have been useful, but I got very lucky with that, with that uh, taking the carrier down. So now I can kind of focus on trying to shoot other things. Well, what's got nice cards? The UCAV replacement. I was thinking about playing that to get my plane back because my carrier is useless without it. But, you know, it's not terribly valuable with. That's my weakest item there. The only thing is it's able to uh, hide, I think. Uh... This is not a useful card, so I'll play this for two points, or do I need a three-pointer? Uh, I'll play this for two. Okay. That means I get to select two stacks to attack with. Now, my, my SSN's already attacked. Um... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this stack. Let's turn these over so I can do things. Uh, do I need to move somewhere? I've got zones covering this. That's kind of pleasant. So I'm just going to launch an attack on this. That's going to give me four dice base. Chinese don't want to reveal their dummy. And they're going to get three dice base. Uh, do I want to play a card to get more possible damage? Yeah, to bust up the, the naval capabilities, I do need to do that. Hey, what's my advantage? It's on searches. I'm good at searching. Uh, I think the railgun's a good choice to throw two extra dice in. Rather than using it for its event or for its kind of low amount of points. And then uh, 
do we have a card that we want to play? We have this crappy card. I can throw a bunch of red dice in. Quick die roll. Not a good attack by the U.S. Just one hit, and it's canceled out. So, you know, did I cheat with the combat? Curious about this. Um, yeah, it's remaining saves. I was curious whether or not all your saves counted for a counterattack or just the ones that you didn't have to use. Turns out it's just the ones you didn't have to use. So that's one of my two points here was that attack. I got another point that I could blow away. I'll use that to move this ship. I'm gonna launch an attack against this. That's gonna give me only two dice. Am I throwing a card in? I'm not. Red gets one die. Now their question is, do they want to play what might be their best event card? On the other hand, they have these targeting precisions, which are pretty good. Hmm. Hard call, always. Yeah, I'll let them roll. Uh, so it's two dice versus one. I'll keep the Russian cards in hand. Okay, so an attack is canceled out by a save. And that's that operation. Now the U.S. gets to decide, do I want to play one of these two cards just for operations to get another action? Hmm. <coughs> oh. I could get a good attack on these destroyers if I wanted it. But then I'd reveal my ships. Maybe they'd be more likely to be attacked. The big thing that's going to make it more likely, though, is that I don't have a lot of cards. I don't really want to spend a three-point card just to make one attack. So I'm going to stop there. And that puts it over to our Chinese. Now, our Chinese need a decent amount of card play. But I want to play my event first. Uh, up to two orders here with three, four, five, and six for... Uh, the dice. All right, where can we hit things that are weak? I have three dice there. Two dice, two dice. Bunch of planes. Hmm. Some of my planes can only fly four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Uh, some of my planes just ain't gonna make it back. Unfortunately, will it be all of my, it'll be all of my planes that don't make it back if I launch an attack. I can't split one off to go do something. So, I think I'd rather do a kamikaze attack here than anything else. Um... Not sure the sub can even be involved in a combat if I attack it. I could hit these guys. Hmm. So can the sub be hit? I think it can as long as it doesn't have the negated sub symbol. It just, they can't interact with each other to prevent. So we're going to go after those subs. Oh well, sub and a destroyer. And we're going to get five dice base for that. And they're going to get five dice themselves. This is the first of two orders coming here. Now, do I want to throw more cards in? Yeah. I'm going to throw two more dice into play, and i got to find more dice. Actually, the U.S. doesn't know that yet. The U.S. can defend. This is heavy dice on both sides. They're also going to throw a two dice of defense into play. Now, 
main goal here is to not lose ships if they can help it. Red gets three hits. Blue blocks them. Right. And now one more attack. Hmm. Well, that didn't work terribly well. But there's a carrier out here that I could slam. I've only got range two with the DDG, which means I wouldn't be in range. Oh shit! I hit on threes as well. I don't. I don't think I got any. I don't know. Crap. Part of the point of me doing that. I'll move here and launch a standoff attack on them. This is not going well for me. I don't. You know, hitting hitting the carrier may not be my best move simply because I, I've got to I've got to hit some things. So. How about instead we pull back and launch this with three dice using the bonus. I'm not going to play this card. Uh, I think I want to launch more attacks. Does blue want to play this card for a defense? An extra defense die? Nah. They get five dice defense. That's pretty good. You know, red hits on threes. This should have been the case on the last die roll, too, and I, I just don't know. So I got two hits. One's canceled out. Uh, the U.S. has to take a hit. What are we going to take that on? We'll take it on the destroyer, I guess. I got one more set of cards. I'll play or one more card. I'll play this. This event I can't use this time, but I get three actions instead. Um, I have already moved this and this. I think I already... No, I didn't. All right, let's fire these guys off. That's two dice. I want to keep picking on the same ships here. Unfortunately, they get like five dice in defense against this. The hit's canceled out. I get two more. Pull back to here. Again, two dice to like five. I got no hits. They hit me twice if they've got any range here, and they've got me in range. I'm going to put a hit on each. Yeah. There aren't quite enough damage markers. I've got a third attack coming. What can I do with that third attack? I can fire off my DDG with that. I only get two dice against five again. Not good odds, but I feel like it's all I got to do here. One hit's canceled out. No bonuses there. Yeah. It's looking bad for the Chinese. Okay. And now we go to air unit movement. Wow. Red's got to go first. And here's what we see. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are going to die. Um, I'll put them in the dead piles. That's a half a death there. And now... Uh, hmm. yeah, what about blue? Blue has no planes. Stacking, I'm assuming, is good. Victory points, well, in both cases, the will moves down one. And you can see red's just uh, a few turns away from losing already. And their ships are in a lot of trouble. This is going very well for the U.S. 
I'm gonna refresh the hands and come back a little later to do the next turn. Now the situation looks pretty bad for the Chinese. They drew a handful of cards including, here's where the nukes come in, tactical nuclear strike. Big four point card, that'll help, or three dice, uh, also helpful. The event, which is tasty looking in a sense, is lose the political will and target a non-city hex and you have a chance of wiping stuff out. If this were a purely military game, if you didn't have to worry about the will, hey, that would be a really impressive type of card. It might do a damage to ships, and it might destroy anything in the hex. You roll for each unit to see what happens, but it costs a will. And I'm just two spaces away, and remember, will is going down each turn. So, that would actually probably just hasten uh, my loss in this scenario. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to play yet. I'm going to reposition my Chinese units over on the U.S. side. Eh. They have an automatic uh, search success in a hex and a number of other things here. All of which are kind of interesting as to your choice for an event play. Uh, these repair one removes a damage marker from up to two of your ships and or subs. I only have one that could be repaired so that probably not going to do. I might repair this. That'll buy me a little extra time essentially. Um, the will is essentially in this box which means it won't be stacked on top of a unit if there's no unit here. So if I repair the plane it'll be these two here instead of this. So that kind of buys me an extra turn right now. So that's kind of exciting too. Plus it gets me a unit and makes my carrier able to do something. Of course I have other kind of neat abilities here. Um, for the Chinese they have the precision targeting which is a nice card uh, up to two orders with the die roll bonus. I may have screwed that up on my last turn, but I'll try to figure out what to do with the Chinese. I think they're, like I said, I think their position's hopeless, though. Just because uh, militarily they no longer have this huge edge. At one point they did with an aircraft carrier with the U.S. not having any planes. But now that their carrier's sunk, well, that's going to be tough. One of my favorite kind of things to muse about in games, the Chinese have pulled back with the decision that yeah, you know, I can kind of shield my ships and maybe I can fall back to within air range or something along those lines. Uh, and in fact, let's send our planes out too, just to get them in a position where maybe they can launch an attack, although I don't think they will. But it provides an additional threat. Now for the U.S., there's a couple of choices. One, take this kind of limited victory that we've gotten, or two, try to press it try to launch an attack here. If I take the limited victory, I'll just pull back, and that pulling back will mean that the, uh, the, uh, you know, the Chinese are going to lose because the will is going to drop down another point. If they're not in range to launch an attack, they're not going to get a victory here. This is always the kind of, hey, are you playing to just win the game, or are you playing it to, you know, mitigate a bad effect if it starts to come, or prevent, you know, th then there's the other side for the U.S. Are you playing to win the game, or are you playing to win it decisively? Uh, this, it, it, it's always a hard question for me. In this case, I just feel like the Chinese wanted to pull back provide a defensive perimeter with their subs, which each have zones of control since there's no U.S. airplanes. I'm not sure what to do with the U.S. yet. We'll see where they go. It's more interesting if they attack, I think. The U.S. has pushed some ships up this way, but most of them kind of position themselves against the main front line. These guys are the flanking force that can get into play here. Now, the U.S. gets to play first. And honestly, the game is skewed in favor of the U.S. player in terms of uh, reactive ability, right? Because they move second, but then they get to attack first so they can wipe out enemy ships. What am I going to take for my uh, attack bonus? The flanking doesn't really do any good 
advantage. I've got as much movement as I need to get there. This is interesting. Uh, grave tactical error. I want to save. That's not going to be my event. I don't have to play an event, of course. I could just play an operation. But I'm going to return up to 2 UCAV for my political will track to any friendly air bases or carriers. Um, and then I can issue an order to each of my aircraft. Well, I can't do anything. <coughs> oh, searches happen first. Uh, I don't want to do a search particularly. I could launch my plane. Uh, I don't see any point to that. So I'm going to get to draw a replacement card. That gets me another one of these blank speeds. Now, I have a lot of points to play with and a decent amount of dice to look for. I could have played this, not as an event, but to ensure uh, my successful search, but I'd rather keep it for points. Let's indeed use that card because it's kind of crappy. And these guys have a huge standoff capability. Four and five hexes. Pull them back here and launch an attack on this Chinese force. That's two Chinese points of ships and five U.S. points. The U.S. can throw some more points in. Five means... Uh, well, I hit on a four, five, or six, so I'm probably going to get like two hits. I need more than that, no question. I'll play this one. And the Chinese, well, they kind of need to protect their ships, but they also would like to be able to launch a counterattack in their turn. This one's only useful against subs. I'm going to play this one. So the Chinese will get two extra dice, and the U.S. as well gets two. Now this is only the first point off a two-point card. The U.S. gets five hits. Chinese get no blocks. I don't have something that can counter that. You know, there's the reroll die just sitting over here. Well, uh... So what did I say? Something like five hits. One, two, three, four. That kills both these ships. Finishing them off. There's a little bit of a problem with these damage markers. Remember, you need these as your dummies. By serving a dual purpose, um, they kind of... You don't have enough of them, as it were. Now for these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here, this here, and this half plane will be here. Now we got this turn, we're going to be dropping down to here. It's not over yet, but the U.S. has another action off this card. These ships have been moved. What do I want as my second action? Well, I don't know if I want to launch my sub. I don't see much point not to. You can't hit the sub unless you're adjacent to it. So it'll fire. And it's going to have a base of three dice. And red's going to get three dice. Am I throwing additional dice in? Well, <coughs> let's see. I would like to be able to launch another attack from these. That's another four dice. That means I'm going to need at least one more card to play. Hmm. Let's play a card. Do we want to defend against this? We're not going to defend with the Chinese for the simple reason that we don't have enough cards. So that's two extra dice for the U.S. And 
U.S. gets three hits. Chinese block two of them. That's one hit on the Chinese ships. Uh, if we take it on the damaged ship, it'll go down, right? No, they can take three hits. But we'll take it on the other ship. Okay. Now the U.S. gets to go again if they wish. The subs moved. This is not. Um, I know this sub doesn't exist, so I'm going to just pull it off the map to keep from confusing myself. I also know that these ships don't exist, so I'll pull them off the map. The reason I know is everything's been revealed now. Uh, well, I'll play this three-point card. That gives me a lot of action. These guys have ranges of four each, so I'll be rolling them. I'll be a four die attack against these guys with their three dice of defense. I am not playing a card. I want to hold on to this because uh, this could blow an event away or it could uh, force a total reroll. What about the Chinese? Do they want to play a card? They certainly don't want to play this one. Uh, I'm planning on using that for dice, but I want that on an attack, not a counterattack. So I'll go with this and hope for the best. That's two hits, which one of which is canceled out. So another damage marker on here. That was one. Two, I got this crappy little ship on its own. Kind of wishing I had done some searching, but you know. I can shoot these guys, and since my range is longer, I'm kind of shooting without any danger. So I'll get my big two dice. And they get three in defense. This is probably the waste of a card, but you never know. Uh, neither side wants to play cards here. And the Chinese would have needed two and to be within range with some of their ships to get any hits there. So that's the U.S. play. For the Chinese, I'm going to play the targeting precision because that gives me the best shots here. And I can issue up to two orders. Well, these poor fools have a range of two, so I'll set them for sale to here. Launch an attack on this. That's gonna be three dice versus two dice. <coughs> Except, you know what? I'm gonna cancel that event and prevent it from happening. All right, so there goes the event card. I gotta launch an attack. I've got just about no chance here at all. I think I'm gonna have to launch two attacks to win the game. So we'll go with that because blues are out of cards. Might as well. So we'll launch a normal attack here. And that'll be my two three dice versus two against this damage ship. See if we can hit it. The hit was canceled. Are my subs? Well, if I don't play another card. Let's launch a sub. We'll we have to reveal it in order to launch it. This can't shoot me back. So it's going to be three dice against two again. No bonus here. 
I got three hits, that's enough to send a destroyer to the bottom. All right. That helped a little bit. I'm gonna play my final card. It gives me four more events, you know. Maybe I wanted to use these battle dice, but doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, this is maybe the weakest thing on the board. Am I gonna be able to hit it? One, two, three. Barely. I'm not gonna be able to get a lot of firepower against it. So my firepower is most effective against this. There's only five dice here, whereas there's seven defensive dice down here. Oh, uh, I moved this crap squadron. Used the sub. So now I got four more attacks. I could launch an air attack, but I don't terribly want to do that. Alright, well, we'll start. I only got two dice against five. I'm hoping for the best here. This is what one shouldn't do. I should be fleeing under my air cover, if possible. But, I get two hits. Puts a couple of damaged markers down. Uh, take them over on the destroyer. Ships don't get worse as they're damaged. So that's one. We got three more. So give me three dice against five. We got one hit. Just countered. This doesn't do anything. I got this little guy. He's not going to get in range. I'll pull him back. Pull this back. Uh, that's my four actions. So now we go to cleanup. Well, not quite. We go to air unit. Fly back. <laughs> where we're rebasing fleet check victory points we're down here we're not dead yet and then we refresh the hand and it looks pretty damn bad for China doesn't it All right so tough calls for the uh, Chinese here they've got really more damage than the US does and uh, they're going to lose this turn no matter what. And one of the questions is, of course, can they save their fleet? Uh, might be up there. Uh, but the other is, they simply don't have the firepower and the capability to take the U.S. down. Uh, certainly not to win, but even to make for a more impressive situation. So they're going to pull back completely at this point, as much as they can. And we'll just... The cards that I've got, they aren't going to help much. Lose political will. Uh, that could bring four aircraft back. That might be a worthwhile thing. Yeah. But I'm going to lose this turn either way. Alright. So, i got nothing that's going to give me political will, nothing that's going to help. So my goal is to get my ships out of the way. I can flip my sub. Keep these others here. They're actually doing something. Let's try to get under something like air cover with this. Hmm. 
not going to be able to get anything useful there. All right. Well, that's all I got, really. In the U.S., well, I got the CGX, which I can flip and drop if I can find a ship hider. And the SSN, which I can also do that with. And obviously, we're going to keep pursuing the attack. I'll shift into place. I'll take a little break while I from the video while I do that. And uh, then we get to the action. <clears throat> now we're on the search phase. Well, the action phase. The U.S. gets to do searches. They're not really interested in performing any searches here. Their main goal is to try to sink some of these ships rather quickly. So what are my cards that are useful here? I've got uh, this one that I don't really want to use. Uh, even though increasing hand size might be better in a, a long game. Uh, issue an order to one unit that must now attack a revealed enemy submarine. Well, there are none of those. Reshuffle the deck and discard piles to form a new draw pile. Increase your maximum hand size to draw another card. And then play the second activity card only for its event. It's a lot of points and a big card, though. I don't want to waste that. Infiltration. Issue orders up to four units. They can slip through. This isn't an impressive card for me for a lot of reasons. <clears throat> I think I'm going to play this. I'm going to try to keep a big hand of cards for uh, offense or defense. I'm going to play this not for its event, uh, but for the two stack attacks. Because I don't have a lot of ships to fight with. I'm going to open up with these DDGs here. Because they're not going to be able to get any attack in through the subs here. So that's going to give me four dice. To Chinese three. Uh, I want to do some damage. So I'm going to put that in, which will give me three more dice. We don't know that yet, but uh, the Chinese want to protect that. Um, this gives them two extra card, two extra dice, which is what they'll take after I reveal. And the attack is four hits, two of which are canceled, so two hits on the Chinese. Now, one hit would sink this ship. Two hits will sink this ship, so I'll take one hit, uh, two hits, and that knocks us into this position. Okay. And these guys have moved. I have one more action. I'm going to use my submarine for this action. It's got a standoff attack, three dice to two dice. I need one more hit to take that last Chinese ship out. I'm going to play a card. And the Chinese, yeah, they want to defend their ship. You know, they're just trying to reduce. This is impressive. I think I'll hold that. That looks like a good event for me. In which case... I'll just throw one extra die in for defense. And yeah, these would be revealed. I just am doing it that way for some reason. Normally I roll dice better in my hands, etc. That's one hit for the U.S. That's enough to send this ship down. It's not over yet as far as, it, well, first of all, you have to make it to the end of the turn. Uh, so if it was a close game, the Chinese could attempt to bring the um, U.S. down lower in points. Now the question here for the U.S. is, do I want to launch any other actions? <clears throat> I think the answer is no. The only question really would be, 
try to slip a couple of these ships away. You know, one die is not going to help me. Let's get it out of the way. <laughs> and now we pass the actions over to the Chinese. Now the Chinese know they're going to lose. And even if they could raise it, it would still drop down to here and they'd be in pretty bad shape. But it's going to go down here next this turn. Uh, I kind of want to launch my attack, so I'll use my special ability. Issue up to two orders. If these units uh, attack, the targeted units will get two less dice. That works. Alright, what are my attack capable units? Yeah, my planes aren't going to be able to hit anything. You know, I could do a search and try to hit this, but yeah, there's stuff I can shoot at. Um, I can go after this sub because it's revealed. I have to get close to it though. Take a shot at the sub. Um, I'm gonna get three dice, uh, and the U.S. only is gonna get one. Do I want to throw more dice in? Hmm. Nah. We'll try to defend our sub. We got one hit that was canceled, and now there's two shots. Now, I was stupid. I moved right up. So that means a hit on the Chinese as well. And now for the Chinese second action, they want to find their sub if they can. Hmm. It's got to be around here somewhere. It's got a range of two. If I slide it here, and reveal I can launch. I can't attack these hidden things, remember. I mean, uh, I can launch a shot on this sub. It's the easiest thing I have to hit with a sub. It'll get me three dice against it. I'm going to play my attack card just because I don't have much else to do here. I'm just trying to do some extra damage. Maybe sink a sub. I got two hits. He cancels one. That gives me one hit. That's the end of the game, though, because the will is going to go down to here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the other aspects. Was this unbalanced, or am I just incompetent, or did I get very unlucky? I, I have no way of knowing, really. <laughs> um, I felt pretty hopeless with the Chinese once I engaged. The U.S. units are definitely... Uh, have some significant advantages, like moving last and striking first. Uh, they, they were outnumbered by the Chinese. I think if the Chinese had managed, it looked good for the Chinese initially when they first wiped out the uh, U.S. planes. So I think it's probably pretty balanced. They just got kind of unlucky in having their carrier taken down. I think it would have been a close game otherwise, although the fact that the Chinese... Um, will start significantly lower and that it's going to decrease puts them in a, in a kind of a position where they have to hit and they have to do well. Um, I may have wasted the first turn. I may have been able to set things up better with an air, that I could have gotten an airstrike in. That wouldn't matter though if my carrier is going to go down, right? All right, let's send this one up. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to do all the scenarios. I'm going to do at least one more, I believe. But this just doesn't feel like uh, my kind of game to enjoy playing solo terribly much. You know, I get, get kind of the same kind of feeling off of it that I do off, say, Ogre. Where, yeah, it's kind of fun to put it out and play. There's enough randomness. There's enough exciting things. Or uh, attack sub. Uh, but... It's just not giving me enough detail like, say, the fleet games would. And not that I terribly uh, am excited about them, even though I collect them. And it's not giving me, uh, you know, the kind of broad story that I like to see in, in a game. Um, that's hard to do with a smaller game. But I, so far, you know, I can see the, the uh, 
the appeal to this one. I don't think it's gotten a lot of press, and I don't think a lot of people have played with it, but we'll see. All right, this 